You're listening to Chrysalis Colored, the podcast. Hello, this is Jorun from Norway and Christine in Canada with a podcast about color analysis and how it applies to you in a practical way. We'll talk about how to use your colors to make your days brighter, your wardrobe more enjoyable, and your life easier. We'll talk about topics that we find interesting, and we encourage you to submit your questions. A podcast listing is available at chrysaliscolor.com under the podcasts tab. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 39 of our podcast, an episode about textures, how it affects color and how texture can help us look absolutely radiant in our season. Hi, everyone. Hi, Joran. How about we begin with some talk about a few textures? Great idea. So we can just kind of ease into the topic and kind of loosen up our texture muscles by tossing around some terminology which we love, um, starting with what are the words that we use to describe different textures and how do we separate different categories of fabric? If we take away color and only talk about other properties of a fabric. Yeah, like broad categories. And I like what you said about take away any color. That was a good idea. So we could separate fabric by weight and weave what would be lightweight fabrics, cottons, lightweight cottons, light jersey, which is, I I learned, is knitted, not woven, and it's thin, which makes it very stretchy. Linen is light, but it's also woven. And as light fabrics go, it's also matte. Woven fabric's not always matte. The tighter the weave, the more shine the fabric may have. And then there are heavier fabrics, which could include heavier cottons like twill, thicker knits, thickly woven sweaters. Canvas would be a a heavy textile like a backpack. Mm. Yeah, twill, canvas, you know, all those things. In Google can be very helpful, by the way, for listeners who don't recognize all of these strange fabric names we toss around. And full disclosure, we Googled quite a bit ourselves, didn't we, Christine, while we were researching this episode? Indeed, I learned about Jersey. (laughs) Yes, and I learned about twill. (laughs) Anyways, so we'll separate by drape and stiffness and flowy versus crisp. Light satin or jersey knit would be drapey, I guess. Um, It would... Drapey would mean to me that it would take on the shape of what's underneath it and follow the contours of that body, hugging the curves. And a crisp fabric, it can repeat the curves if it's tailored to do so, I guess, like, what's that word, taffeta? Uh, Or it can exist completely independent of the body that's wearing it. thinking this time about the stiff A-line dresses of the 60s, you know, the ones that hold its shape and stand out like a triangle and the stick figure of Twiggy kind of runs around inside the dress without the dress so much as twitches. <laughs> yeah, or touches her. <laughs> yes, or touches her. And, and Or like a skirt that you can stand on the floor. Um, there are different It's very different to clothes that need to have a body in them to get a shape, I guess. If you drop them, there'd be a puddle on the floor. Yeah, that was something I really learned was those those items of clothing I used to completely ignore because on a hanger, they looked like melting ice cream. Mm -hmm. And there was there was no doesn't matter how how much imagination you have. You could not figure out what this would look like on anybody. And then someone put it on and it was kind of revealing. And I guess like a a medium cotton, that would be somewhere between flowy and crisp, wouldn't it? So the property of the fabric is how you create the shape. Sewing the the puddly fabric into a triangle shape, the fabric just wouldn't obey. And I think texture, style, body type, they're all very related and they are not our field of specialty, but we mention them because they're, they're part of this picture. We have several style and line analysts, though, in our community, if you would like to learn more about how textile and texture relates to your body type, and we will add a link in the show notes. So for today, we're going to focus on texture and color. Yeah, uh, sorry, I zoned out a bit. I was focusing on puddly. I love that word. <laughs> I wonder if people are going to start 
Googling puddly fabric after this podcast. Don't do it, everybody. I think Christine yeah. and I just made that up. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so we separate by surface and shine. Shine is more congruent with the essence of some seasons more than others, which we'll get back to if our listeners are patient enough to stay with us. But Christine, speaking of listeners, I'm sure at least some of them are wondering why are we talking about this? why does texture matter? It matters because color changes depending on texture. Reflectivity is part of how we see color since colors reflected light and texture influences how that light is reflected from surfaces. I'm, I'm thinking of the beach with fine grained sand and another beach with pebbles. They're similar colors. They can be similar colors, but with very different effect. That, that kind of brilliance of the sandy beach and the dullness of the pebbled beach, the fine sand being more reflective of the sun, maybe connected to, well, kind of connected to the color of the sand, but coarser textures, they do reflect light differently, don't they? They do. The, the whole texture, the understanding of texture began for me when I was looking for colors in fabrics. And then I noticed that in each season, there were similarities. The textures had similarities. There was other things too. Like in spring, I always learned, I turn down the iron or you'll melt the textile. Different conversation, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> in autumn, I did not turn down the iron. And there were many woven and matte surfaces. The, the bins and the bags that held autumn fabrics, in fact, were the heaviest of all the seasons. And of the autumns that were shiny, the ones that I found most evocative and most beautiful in the colors were fabrics that were earthy metallic, both in the color and in the shine. So earthy color, well, that would be muted with orange. What's an earthy texture? To me, I think it means uneven or irregular, but not delicate. Like it's not crystalline or gossamer or angel floss. There's weight to it, like gemstones plucked out of the earth. There's an internal strength. Many people prefer earthy texture in fabrics in any season. Well, maybe I should say natural texture. And they're fine as long as the color is right. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Yarn? I think that's oh, true. Eh? Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And then as a color analyst, over time, I started noticing that the texture of the fabric might mimic or streamline really easily with a person's skin texture or reflectivity. And then other times it challenged it or created effects that were detracting or artificial, you know, like the skin could look thick or clogged. It would take it would kind of feel like pea soup, a velvety look that was unhealthy and did not belong with the face or the person or the skin might look really oily in certain textures or really weird, certain kinds of iridescence that just looked strange. And like, for instance, very smooth, super shine worn by the, the soft seasons, it would look oily. And I realized that not only does fabric reflect light in certain ways, well, skin does as well, which seems very logical <laughs> to say it now, but at the time it was kind of a revelation. As if there's this inherent reflectivity that goes with the colors within the skin. And, and then there's that point where it's hard to know whether the reflectivity of our skin is related to its color or something else about the skin composition. Like I look at urine, we, we record these on Zoom, so we're looking at each other. <laughs> we know when to start and stop. <laughs> and urine to me is glowy, but Christine, is velvety, maybe even a little smoky. Nothing to do with pore side or size or oily skin or dry skin or sun damage or aging. Nothing like that. There's something more global about how we reflect light. And I'm not sure if that's only about our colors or, or something else. Just to say that when the shine in the fabric is similar to the shine in the skin, there's a real nice continuity, a feeling of two things letting each other be as they are rather than imposing some kind of change that doesn't belong. So anyway, that's that's my uh, the, the trip through my diary. Let, let's go <laughs> back to talking about which textures play well with our 12 seasons colors. Well, 
<laughs> being me. Let's start with me. Yeah, me, me and my needs, me, right? <laughs> me, me and my season. I belong, I belong to a season that is traditionally connected with shiny fabrics and reflective surfaces. I'm a bright winter. And I have a shirt made of linen in a beautiful white. It's matte. It's not very smooth and goes a little bit gray in the folds, perhaps, uh, and a bit yellow in the highlights. And uh, why am I talking about this? Well, I, I think it, this is to say that yeah, color trumps texture. I mean, it, it's, it's as easy as that. But I may be more reflective of light or glowing, as Christine so nicely puts it. It's very <laughs> nice. Um, I may be more reflective of light, but maybe it does look a little soft next to me. It doesn't matter because the color makes it work. Yeah. And I could see, I know the blouse you mean, and I could see that blouse in satin, more tightly woven cottons, various shine levels. Because the color works, any one of them would be lovely. And I also think about that beautiful white sweater. In fact, I think you knitted you knitted it twice to get the color right. But you, it's made of mohair and merino, right? And yeah. it has more presence under your face, but it's not particularly shiny. True. But I, I, the mohair fibers, you know, inherently have a little more shine, I guess. Yeah. And I, I do think too, as we do with everything to do with our colors, hair, makeup, whatever, we find our way. And I, I find that um, you too, with texture, right? You found your way. Like today you're wearing this beautiful um, maraschino red silk kind of blouse. It's yeah. not shiny, but it's not woven and it's just stunning. Y'all should see what yarn looks like. <laughs> <laughs> right. But to, would you have thought early on in your color journey that that was too slinky or artificial? Oh, yes. And yeah. it's shiny and it, but it's real silk and I'm a, a natural fibers kind of person. So yeah. the fact that yeah. it's not polyester, it's silk that makes it, makes yeah. me like it. Cause I, yeah. I'm I'm so comfort driven. It feels good on my skin, and then that. Sure, and we adapt, right? We adapt to weather. We adapt to all sorts of things. But if you just look at yourself on the screen here, that we should be putting your picture on here. Your hair is twenty <laughs> times more shiny than the shirt. That shirt isn't shiny. That's right? true. That's true. <laughs> you know. So it's we're all kind of on this interesting journey and in learning from one another. Kind of <laughs> like. If you take a picture emerald colored satin, glassy shine, smoothest shine ever, and you could lay it on this deep sapphire cushion, same kind of shine. Well, they're gorgeous. They come from the same world. Neither one is more than the other. They're better because they're together. Like Yorin in the white mohair sweater, the blocks of the clothing and the, perf and the person just stack up perfectly. But if you took that emerald satin fabric and laid it on a pair of blue jeans, um, they change each other. Maybe the jeans look a little rugged. Maybe the satin kind of looks slick or wet or oily somehow. That's a very good example. I can see that in my head. I really can. And it kind of has the same effect that a color isn't a color until it's next to another color. and shine shine influences each other well texture influences yeah. what's next to it, just like colors do that is a brilliant analogy i that, know yeah how it looks depends on what's beside it yeah it Go does <laughs> all right <laughs> anyway so let's just stop here for a minute i want us to say we want to try and be careful here christine because um somehow i'm a little worried that what we say in this episode will be tangling us up in the stereotypes. Again, remember the previous episode, we talked about stereotypes and um, the way we wear textures. Does it really apply equally to everyone regardless? Or is it this, are we bringing in stereotypes into this again? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's both. Nothing applies to everyone in a season 
equally. Was it in that episode we talked about mental models? And, you know, mm-hmm. you and I have been color analysts for a long time, and we know the, the mental model of season, but it's kind of rigid. Like, this is how true winter has to look, and this is how soft summer has to look. And then um, we know from all the clients we've seen, it, it's not really true. It's a place to start, but there there are many, many gaps. And everybody, I think, in every season has to kind of find their way and adapt some things, whatever it might be. And mm-hmm. they might not get positive feedback because we're sort of, you got to be careful with feedback, right? If you're challenging other people's wor- world view, they, they don't really like True. that. True. But, but there's so much rigidity in mental models, any mental model. Mm. But yeah, nothing applies to everyone equally, I don't think. The, the ways of the natural world, though, do apply to all of us equally. We stand yep. under the same sun. The physics of light are the same, whether you live in Norway or New Zealand. I think we do see color dimensions the same. Warm, cool, soft, bright, light, dark. I'm pretty sure those are the same in Canada and China. Yes, because it's physics, right? Yeah. Light is physics. Light, color, texture. Eyes work um, the same way, right? We're, we all got the same biology in our eyes. Yeah, yeah. Right, and the same laws of science and nature of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so getting back to textures, remember, Christian, this is textures we're talking about. Oh, yeah, texture, texture, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to go off into my natural world uh, dream world. Oh, okay, fine, fine, we texture. Do, we do so love our tangents, don't we? Oh, I like my, oh, yes, I can wander around <laughs> in that world for a long one time. One of the many things know. I, yeah, one of the many things I like about you. <laughs> anyway, so does matte texture work for everyone? We say that shiny doesn't work for everyone, but does matte textures work for everyone? And me liking matte fabrics, I would say yes. Well, I have to be of that opinion because I adore wearing natural fibers and I feel very comfortable in those. And I would be really devastated if I was, you know, I am a winter and as a winter, I could only wear polyester and satin because of the shine. Um, a step further from matte, how about fleecy or downy or flannel fabrics? Do they work for everyone if the colors are right? I, you know, for me, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Because I've said many times, if the color is right, you know, that goes without saying, because if a fabric harmonizes with your color fan, that it works. And any textile can be dyed any color. Do we agree? Yes. Nothing to add? Nope. <laughs> first, it's so a first. Everybody, let's, let's note that date down. Let's mark this day that Christine yeah. did not have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, Christine, what about melange or heathered effects in fabrics? We often say that the winters should avoid heathered fabrics because it appears more muted and less crisp than what winters need. But for summers, it gives just the right kind of softness to a color. I I don't know. I, I think autumns would carry heathered effects really well. Springs, I'm not sure. I think maybe springs might need a little more clarity to exude that kind of that sunny energy of spring. And by the way, being the nerd that I am, would you call melange or heathered a texture or a pattern? It, t- it creates a sense of depth or variety. So it could be, could it be an irregular pattern or is it a texture? Um, well, now I'm thinking about if, if I heard the word heathered, I would think it of it synonymous with dusty or soft, but possibly solid color. But by melange, you mean like two or three colors kind of all twisted together in the in the fibers? Would, yeah, you, so, would yeah. you see that? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. And, and, and also mm, uh, it could be like a variegated, usually it's just two colors. It's yeah. like you have a, you have a, a top you sometimes wear with a with with a kind of a very very stripy irregular heathered mm-hmm. effect. It's gray and light gray mm-hmm. dark kind gray. of graphite and white and black yeah 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 something yep. like that and um, yeah yeah I mean it may be just you know the difference between English 
and Norwegian and and mm -hmm. something in the translation. But uh, if we say melange, that multicolors variegated together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I see that as a pattern, like a very, very small scale print. Mm -hmm. Totally, it does create a softening because the colors are blending together more. So even from a social distance, it's... It, mm -hmm. um, well, it's softened, right? It, it's the the distinctions are not between the colors aren't clear, and then depending on the colors, though, the more contrast in the colors of the the fibers, the more textured it might appear, or because it might give the illusion of deeper shadows or a bumpy surface, like that top of mine. It's a workout kind of knit, and it's black, graphite, and white, but it does kind of uh, look like it might be rough to touch. But mm -hmm. it, it isn't. It's just twisted mm -hmm. fibers. So the conclusion is that it's a pattern creating a textured. Uh, vi uh, yeah. The word English. Effect? Anyway. Yeah. Impression? Thank you. Well, it's kind of like fur, I suppose. Uh -huh. Like if you, if, yep. well, anyway, <laughs> I'm going off into my world here. Yeah, blah, Bring blah, me blah, back, Yorin. <laughs> For God's sake, I'm get, me, so get me out of here. Yes. <laughs> I'm a knitter, so I'm envisioning these uh, strands of yarn that have the heathered effect, and and melange yeah. is the word that that yeah. we. Is it not with. funny how long we can spend thinking about these things? I, I mean, I can be looking out a window and thinking about <laughs> melange <laughs> fabric yes. for an hour. Anyway, anyway. Oh, well, the mm -hmm. two nerds. Back to the world yeah. everyone else lives in. Yes, yes, yes. Meeting across the oceans. Anyway. <laughs> So still thinking about texture groups, let's make a headline here. And okay. if I say smooth versus rough, go, Christine. Okay. Smoother shine, more light reflection, which causes colors to look lighter. And that works well for springs. And then if the shine is really focused or mirror-like, like it comes to a sharp white, sharp point or glassy and the reflection is white, you probably are into winter. Spring shine is kind of more glowy. And of course, the colors are warm. So the highlight is usually warm. Indoor light, too, it often has yellow in it. Well, sunlight as well, which gives a warmer effect because the light that goes into anything has an awful lot to do with the color that comes out. Mm -hmm. And that happens to me like when I try to buy white online in photographs, they all look kind of yellow, but uh, it's not yellow when it arrives in the mail. Yep, tell me about it. I yeah. bought a running skirt online. Oh, well, obviously online, you, you can just hear, you know what's coming now, right? The color <laughs> looked like fresh, bright yeah. winter white in the photos. But when it arrived, it was this optic blinding white, which makes huh. any other white that I hold up against it look dirty and muddy. You know, that, that white that only super synthetic, you know, workout fabrics can have. Yep. And, you know, I, I could have returned it, but I didn't. Um, kind of like neon white. Absolutely. That's that's the word. Yeah. Like um, you could picture a sign, like a marquee over a, in a, for a movie or, you know, Flashing something light. in Las Vegas, neon. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> like a strobe or something. My Las Vegas strobe running skirt. Mm. Yeah. But you could wear like a, a though your colors, if anybody's going to balance that, your your colors yeah. would. And you could just wear some like a longer tunic or something or that maraschino but, top you have on. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've worn it. I'm, I guess my disappointment was that I couldn't wear a white tank top on top of it because oh, all yeah. the other whites look dirty so but I have I have hot pink fuchsia sure. tank tops and and uh, you know yeah. brighter colors and it, it looks okay looks I'm fine and probably being outside the yellow of the sunlight does warm the the reflection up a little bit yeah yeah it's yeah, all yeah. right with woven or textured surfaces well light is affected by deeper hills and valleys less light in the valleys that would make a darker effect could be light gray, or it could be quite dark if the valley is deep and the, the surrounding color is dark, like a cave. <laughs> Usually mm -hmm. muted because we're talking about variations of shadows. Mm -hmm. Now, Christine, let's go through the seasons. Um, organizing, I, I think we talked about organizing it as the four true seasons, and then we can just kind of adapt for their neutral seasons and mention that as they come up. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a perfect thing to do. And um, 
We'll talk a little bit about the fabrics in the fabric color sets. I'll put a link in the show notes, but recently what folks know as the luxury drapes, there's a video on YouTube. Pardon me. That's what I'm going to link in the show notes that explains all of this. And um, they are 15 colors in your season. They are the perfect reference point and place to get started. And they um, they're called fabric color sets and folks can buy them. However, Remember that if you if you have these, the colors in them are not exclusive in terms of text texture, pardon me, or textile, because these are fabrics that are intended to become analyst drapes. So they need to be fairly durable. Analysts will use them over and over over their career. And they have to be strong enough to hold a grommet. That's the metal ring up in the corner that the hoop passes through. And um, what else? Heavy fabrics will dull the cutting blades too quickly. Uh, sequin, fur, they shred. Very mm -hmm. thin fabric. It slips like it slithers <laughs> around. <laughs> you can clamp it to the table all you like. It, it will not stay still. And so you can't cut it in a straight line, meaning that many beautiful fabrics are passed over for functionality reasons. And when you are shopping for clothing, you don't have any of those concerns. You're looking for the color wherever you find it. So have the fabric color set, but don't think of those textiles and uh, textures as exclusive because they're not. Mm -hmm. Well, they're indications and examples. And I, I really like the way you explained this, Christine, because it makes perfect sense. And it answers at least some questions that we've gotten about the drape sets and how they're different from fabrics in actual clothing stores. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Moving right along to spring. Uh, when I think of perfect texture for spring, I think of elements of transparency or chiffon or sheer blouses on top of a cotton tank top. And, or a skirt with many transparent layers. Uh, those are textures that play well with spring colors too. And shine, some shine, um, like we said before, not as much as the mirror and um, the patent leather and the sequins for winter. Well, excepting maybe bright spring because of the winter influence. Uh, smooth leather, not pebbled or rustic leather for for springs? When I think of spring texture, what comes up in my mind is lots of versatility in the degree of shine because they're, they're so flattered by lightness. And I mean light color here rather than weightlessness, although that's good too, as Joran said, sheer fabric. And they're also flattered by motion of light, light changing across a surface. Smoother fabrics for sure. Lining is, I know you don't really make clothes out of lining, but that kind of fabric is gorgeous for skin. Uh, spring, pardon me. Light cotton, also good. Mid shine satin, beautiful. And it looks very luxurious. Pebbled textures, crepe linen, lightweight twill, denim. Very good if the color is right. I mean, everybody has some of this in their wardrobe. We don't, nobody dresses in all shine and nobody dresses in all cotton. And I think variety, versatility. Well, it has a lot to do with body type. It has a lot to do with buy it wherever you might find it. It adds interest. You know, I just think it's a shame when folks don't take advantage of it. I don't mind a little texture for true spring, light spring, because they're both a little softer than bright spring. And as Joran said, smoother might be better depending on the item as winter comes in. Mm. Yeah. And the transparency, you could a transparency that you can read through like jelly, like beads, the, the Murano glass beads or jelly shoes. Uh, maybe that applies more to accessories, but also as a, a comparison to mirrors and sequin. Uh, I know you, Christine, just posted a video about spring colors and textures. Let's uh, remember to put a link to that in the show notes as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, it was the last video posted and uh, there are good examples there, I think. Helps me to picture a world and look around, which will come as a surprise to nobody. <laughs> this is <laughs> kind of where my inspiration comes from is I just take myself to this place. So I think, well, okay, I'm 10 inches high. 
and I'm standing on a lily pad in a pond. I'm looking around. What do I see? The floor is green and it's an opaque green, but there is light bouncing everywhere off droplets of water on every surface. This scene is glowing because it's daylight. There, It's a sunny day. And this is about color. So where's the texture bit? Well, standing on my lily pad, I can see smooth. <laughs> Yarn will bring me down to earth, so I better do it myself. <laughs> I can see smooth. I see quite shiny. I can see matte. I see dragonfly iridescence. I can see that smooth texture of fish and frogs. Kind of like smooth, moist, shiny, flexible. What's that? Almost elastic. Hmm. Oh, I love your mind pictures, Christine. Anyway, so I, what Christine said, <laughs> um, and it's, it's applicable to all springs, don't you think? Light spring and true spring might be more similar than bright spring being the outsider here because that carries some of the crispness of winter a little bit harder like sequins and uh, I think bright spring has a lot more shine possibilities in some items yeah I agree I agree the priority for bright spring I think is saturation color saturation over texture yep 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 right matte to shine ah they all work it, it, if they can achieve the color i've seen tweedy jackets in bright colors they would be absolutely great i also think about your norwegian heavy wool sweater it has fuchsia snowflakes on a background what color is that background sort of a natural oh, gray is it yes there's gray and white yep yep oh my gosh that's a beautiful sweater and, and and also, I suppose it means you don't have to have the entire area be fuchsia. Just the fact that those flowers are there, the background is close enough it, to support the, the snowflakes, but they're the ones that make the impact. And it's gorgeous. Colored wool coat, too. Um, I think that's beautiful. I'm, I'm not coming up with any limitations here for bright spring. No, I think bright spring should be quite unlimited uh, as a whole. Anyway. Um, the point is that we're just kind of hammering home here is that <laughs> if the color is bright enough, you're fine. That's right. Mm. So moving on to summer. What comes to <laughs> mind? I've, I've gone off into my world. What comes yeah. to mind for summer? Matte, fleecy, cotton, paper. That's what comes to my mind first. Mm. Um developing on that i'd add translucent because i like lightweight for summer too it really just looks good but i'd add translucent but not jelly like what Joran said lemonade frosted glass mm -hmm. um and another tech effect might be color related but i do think it's texture too is toothpaste so this color is or fabric chalky dry even it is smoother than textured maybe porous which in fabric could relate to paper, absorbent paper, say like watercolor paper, maybe even a pumice stone. I see fabric that looks smooth and matte, but if you run your fingers over it, it's just a little bit rough. Does that make any sense, Yarn? It does make sense. I'm just kind of rubbing my fingertips here, imagining it. Yes. Conjuring. Are you thinking of something like crepe or linen? I'm envisioning that. Yeah, I would say crepe so. Would be that feeling. Mm. Very crepe, I think, would be very much like that. Maybe even cotton too, right? It's not smooth True. and slick. It's um, papery. Yeah. Yep. Also, summer. There for me, there's a lot of water energy in summer. That there is no ice energy. It's it's a water mm -hmm. feeling, and so lightweight draping, flowy blends are important because they they're very expressive. They replicate water's movements, the lines that moving water creates. Mm. And they create shadows that are softer than the main color, but not a whole lot darker. Cotton linen, yeah, absolutely what you said, Yorin. Low shine satin, maybe some mid shine for party looks or to show off a beautiful color. Um, taffeta, I think has medium shine, but it's kind of cool. It's a slightly metallic shine and it's a diffused, meaning the shine doesn't come to a sharp point. It's diffused over a big wide area. The fibers are twisted as they're woven thanks to Google, who taught me this, and it creates <laughs> more luster than sharp shine. Hmm, I like that. Luster, that sounds much more summery than shine. It's like a, a pearl. A pearl has luster. 
Very much. Yep. Yeah. And I, I guess you could call it glowy, but I think of it more as luster. What about light summer? Matte, softly lustrous, lightly textured. That's the range I'm thinking of. Cotton, pearlescent, satin, lightly textured jerseys, knits. And cotton, we could be in every kind of weight and finish or many kinds of weight and finishes. I mean, we all need a blazer. We all need a pair of jeans and we all need um, summer tops. Light summer's rainbow. That's what those colors make me think of as a rainbow. I think about a tray of glasses filled with summer drinks. I think about what would be around them. It would be the surfaces of fruits and flowers, which also works for springs really well. There's this water quality to summer that can work with watery textures, meaning drapey, the ones that are kind of hard to cut or maybe slightly puddly. <laughs> um, and water prints are terrific too. Waves, sponge, fountain effects, all really beautiful. Smooth fabric, crinkly fabric, a little bit crinkly is nice, but you wouldn't call it rough or heavy. Fleece, I think, could be a high enough level of weight and texture, maybe a cotton sweater, but it's a great fabric because it can be dyed any color. Then a light summer listening might say, well, yeah, but I don't live near the equator. What are my cold sweater options? Cold weather, pardon me. What are my cold weather options? I mean, everybody's got them. So smooth wools in coats and sweaters are the answer. I also like how nylon jackets look here. They have this soft, you know, the soft peak stage when you beat egg whites. I think that looks really good on summery, summery springs because there's a little bit of internal energy without being too well, too strong or too rigid, let's say. Soft luster and a little bit of stiffness and lift. That's a spring thing. It stands up like there's been air whipped into it rather than an internal strength. There's nothing industrial here. This is really more like gauze. Mm. I love listening to you. Cause you know, this this makes me think of a pavlova, this whipped stuff. The oh, yeah. The air whipped into it and those associations of clouds which I find irresistibly summerish yeah. and um, the berries on top is that's how summers do jewel colors so yeah. the pavlova is a perfect image isn't it well and also because you've got the dryness of the meringue because mm -hmm. it's kind of chalky right and it's kind of porous but it's yeah, not perfect. gritty and mm -hmm. And then you've got the, the glowy shine of the fruits, but nothing here looks oily or metallic. So that was really good. Yeah. Yep. 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 You're getting it, Yarn. You're coming into my world. I am. I <laughs> I'm am. not going to be all alone here. We're all going to be together. You're rubbing off on me. I am. <laughs> I know. Welcome. Welcome. Pull up a chair. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will. Ah, let's pour the wine and make it. Let's, amazing. let's, yeah. Yes. Anyway, so uh, a lot of this um, stuff we mentioned now is actually very applicable to true summer, very similar to it. And I, but I can, I can see how it would be less relevant to soft summer because the color in soft summer seems to have like more of a, the density of an autumn. Agree, agree. Autumn light creates depth. What's that mean? Okay, pardon me for this, but this is how I understand this world. Um, the light, when light comes in at a low angle, like in the autumn or at the end of the day, um, surfaces appear rounder and like you can see behind things. So textures are woven or thicker. And to me, on any autumn person, that looks like strength. Okay, what's what's my what's my story here? Where am I gonna go disappear into what's, a misty what's your landscape? What's my landscape? I'm in a misty marshland. I'm not sure of shapes compared with bright uh, spring, where the greens are so green, green that I can see leaf edges even next to other leaf edges. Here, one leaf is blending into the one beside it. Mm. Could be soft autumn too, you know, depending on. Mm -hmm. Your marshland colors. It's, it's a useful um, image to have when you're shopping, right? You know, yeah. could you hang this shirt on the branch in that particular marshland? Um, mm -hmm. Cottons, perhaps, of moderate weight and surface roughness. Light draping polyesters and uh, kind of going into heavier blends like high-end t-shirts. You know, they have substance. Autumn is about substance to me. 
and shine in satin. It can be smooth and very, have a soft, diffuse, silvery gray luster. It doesn't come to a sharp or white focal point, right? Right. And yeah, more texture as autumn appears. So what's that? Suede? Uh, waffle weave, I really like that because it's not extreme texture. There, this is still summer, not autumn, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a light pebbling. And in these colors, or in, in let's say a waffle weave in suede, the valleys go to a soft gray, partly because of the colors, partly because of the depth of the valley. And the hills are pearly. Jersey, that's a lighter weight, more stretch, more movement. Really, I think good for summer and spring. Whereas Ponte Knit is stiffer, less stretch more internal strength and the density of it brings a kind of stability and that speaks to me of autumn maybe kind of what you may meant by substance or maybe you meant something different no i did mean that yeah, yeah. and uh, um soft autumn soft summer they're kind of some sometimes on the same branch here and yeah. soft summer too would look great in chambray and heathered marled and kind of mixed wools it's beautiful here or or I suppose on any summer and as well as soft autumn very much so I mean a painting or if you were knitting a, a misty marshland it's that thing where you just can't quite tell where the the edges are I, that, that's just absolutely beautiful kind of hypnotic um okay true autumn let's talk about autumn what comes to my mind smooth shine like a soft glow pebbled fabric crinkle fabric now, colors are getting darker now. Um, surface of gemstones, absolutely granular surfaces. They're, they're not perfectly smooth. Uh, pebbled leather, earthy colors in metallics, plush, wool, could be either smooth or chunky. Wool is really good for autumn. Tweed is classic, like corduroy. A mm -hmm. rougher texture as a way to mute color. My taste, though... The higher the shine for the textile, the more I prefer it in metallic colors like gold and brown, you know, like shimmery sand. I mean, that's diamonds in the Sahara, right? Those are the browns of spices. Mm. And we're talking heavier textiles, textiles of substance, canvas or a barn coat or a barber coat. Very good in those fabrics. Um, it makes the colors look some... Uh, a little bit more rich, right? Mm -hmm. It strikes me that this would be true for any of the three autumns, but if you took a very similar color in say like soft autumn or and light spring, maybe the light spring wouldn't wear it well in those fabrics. It would look bulky, like work wear, but in cotton, those same colors might be fine for light spring. Yeah. Anyway, but we did still say that color trumps texture. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd have to see it. And I mean, of course, yeah. it depends on on body type and other things. Autumns can wear completely smooth fabrics. There, there's no mm, rigid rule here. We really adapt it to who you are. Brocade, I think, a good example of a heavier textile that is woven and also embossed, meaning the print or design is thicker or higher than the background, which I think would make the coolest pants. I mean, it, it does kind of look a bit like a curtain or a tapestry, but on an autumn, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And a spring, yeah, what you said, if the colors were right, sure, you know, on the right person. But on a lot of seasons, it, they could give the effect of wearing a curtain or a couch. But on an autumn, man, I just find that very automatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every item doesn't need to be textures for autumn to create an impression, right? Yeah. Same as not all spring things have to shine. In fact, it's better if it's not in terms of good texture variation through an outfit. That looks so great on autumns, the, the variation, layers and different um, blending different textures. Um, soft autumn has a little summer mixed in and I enjoy so much when they combine both kinds of textures in one outfit, like denim with something drapey and straight lines and flowy ones together. It's, it's a good energy for them. It's a great energy. I'm thinking about, you know, even 
eyelet and a jean jacket, an eyelet dress and oh, a jean jacket. Yes. That's just, that just look good. I know. Yeah. And like you said, not everything has to be textured in the same way that um, shine, uh, shine needs matte to have more meaning. Same as light mm -hmm. doesn't have a whole lot of meaning unless you got dark. And so mixing things together, I find it there's much more communication and more interest to set them off one another. And like for practicality, who the heck has an all shiny wardrobe, whatever kind of, even if you're a bright season, it, it makes no sense. So yeah, wide variety, unlimited, I think, of matte fabrics of any weight for autumn. I find it interesting to use heavier cottons and knits in pastel type colors or autumn's interpretation of pastels like pink and yellow you've got uh the weight of autumn so here we're on to soft autumn you've got the weight of autumn and then the pastel quality of summer together i think that mm. looks really good it's beautiful as a knitter yarn i'm also thinking that a looser knit might create a little drape like you would see the interlock in the fibers without the weight of heavier knits, like in one of those slouchy tops that kind of comes over the shoulder a little bit. Mm -hmm. That sounds nice. But generally, I think chunky or loose knits would look good on any autumn, not only soft autumn. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to agree with you there. Mm -hmm. And uh, dark, what about dark autumn? Let's talk about them for one second. So matte always works. But here winter has arrived. And shine, it does, it becomes opulent. I, I think about fire and jewels. So allow me to bring you into my world for a moment. Oh, <laughs> Where yes. are we? We are transported now. I'm doing ASMR color here. We are mm -hmm. transported into an old rich library. One evening, what's around us? The fire in the fireplace, the stonework of the fireplace, the burgundy velvet couch, the glowing golden globe. There are dark green plants and they look almost black. There might be a candle or two. That might be some of the lightest colors in this room. So we've got smooth and rough and rich surfaces. I, For some reason, coffee beans come to mind. I guess Turkish coffee or espresso would fit into here. Even the, the and then the smoothness of cognac, right? So there's a contrast there. You could have like a rougher surface, like black peppercorns, smooth of cognac in a glass. So anyway, you get it. What's not here? Kool-Aid, uh, fog, and steel. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I'm imagining the smell of leather when you describe that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leather. Mm. The smell of old books and leather. Um, but books, that's really good. Embossed spines, those illuminated yes. texts. Oh, man, yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy and other people can wander around and I, say, I know, <laughs> you know I'm, I, I'm not like does sure. anyone know what I'm talking about here so yep. so thank you for understanding what I'm talking about I do perfectly libraries vibe well with me mm. anyway but a, a lot of the seasons this um, dark autumn luxury comes from the colors I imagine that heavy satin you often see it in wedding gowns like a high thread count that looks rich and of good quality um an organza scarf might break all the rules which is really nice that the juxtaposition of different textures that would be lightweight translucent but that bit of shine um and in in those colors i you know i could see that a spectacular scarf a sleeve and uh, light passing the candlelight, of course, passing mm. through these colors. That would look kind of give that autumn depth. Stained glass, maybe more than Kool Aid. Um, you have to imagine the strength, more of more strength than chiffon. Um, the organza that I mentioned that works as a combo because it brings in the combination of textures that were going on and on about that it's so good for autumns we talked yeah. about that earlier. dark autumn these colors are warm and sensual there's definitely a feeling of caffeine here um so in your in your wardrobe include textured fabrics leather plush that you might not find in fabric sets or you might not have seen in drapes if you saw a color analyst i'm thinking about what's coming into my a persian rug 
red and gold together, I mean, that becomes opulent and complex. Smooth shine works, enamel prints, they're great for evoking textures. So the Persian rug in a printed blouse. Also, dark autumn, this is dark winter too, a black uh, folk prints. So I had a Hungarian mother, so I would see these mm -hmm. black backgrounds and bright, bright colors, mm -hmm. uh, rustic colors, if we're into dark autumn, dark winter. Speaking of dark winter, let's let's talk about winter. What's true of all winters? Well, what we said before, colors are saturated. So like paint out of the tube creates an intensity and a weight of color. And the only way to balance it is to go, combine it with other colors from the same world. It makes a solid feeling does not look like vapor. It doesn't even really look like liquid. It is more like stones and lacquer and ice. We're in a water world. Well, what does water do when it's cold? It's, it's ice. Cool and solid. So that associates with, with some metal for me, iron, lead, steel, aluminum. Mm -hmm. And contrast. Contrast is something that all three winters do well with. It's true of all of them. Uh, contrast of colors, of course. Um, but what about texture? I'm thinking patent leather handbag, bringing in a mirror texture in small portions, perhaps. Sure. I mean, you know, shine, matte and shine kind of explain one another. They, they give them mm -hmm. both more meaning. True winter, if we focus on true winter for a second, this is the season I find is hardest to capture in words. I, I don't know why I find true winter so mysterious. <laughs> That's not going to stop you from drawing. No, no, I'll, I'm going to give it a shot here. <laughs> <laughs> um, true winter, if we combine smooth shine with cool temperature, okay, we got ice. The colors of ice and the texture of ice, the hardness, the immobility, the stability, but calm in the sense of very little movement. There's a permanence, like in the sense of glaciers, um, solitude comes to mind. Not helpful for choosing colors or textures, I get it. But the pic big picture of what it says to me is there's not a lot of shifting or movement. There's not a lot of scatter. I enjoy large areas of solid colors and textures. I am not saying that winters can't wear prints. Of course they can. But those large areas of solid colors, even if you just do that with your neutrals, it gives this sense of calm, where as colors divided up starts feeling activated, it feels like a world warming up. Maybe for the brights, it would be okay. Um, same with prints. I actually can't remember a true winter who loves a busy print. Me um, neither. No, no. no. It, it, it just depends on the print. They can be superb, but they, they don't connect as easily as spring and prints. That's for sure. Right. But and, and prints, yes, but not busy prints. Yes. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, fabric has got to saturate well, and it's got to hold color. Co cotton might not always do that, or it might until you wash it 10 times. Mm -hmm. When I look at the fabrics for true winter together, and I only think about texture, what Joran said at the beginning, just cancel out any text, any color. It's all gray. First thing that actually strikes me is smoothness. There mm -hmm. are light crepes, some with light texture, various satin, soft, glowy shine for the most part. Higher shine would be quite okay in small areas. Why small areas? Because too much shine makes light move around too much and it starts to feel like a too busy print. Why for me on a true winter, this feels like buzzing, but it does depend on the person. Some people have a very quick body rhythm. It would work, but there's something too buzzy about it. Mm -hmm. You're, and I see you've got beautiful sweaters. We've mentioned some that you've knitted chunky ones very fine mohair ones it's kind of amazing the white mohair it's dreamy and uh, it just looks beautiful maybe the wool maybe wool is more traditionally autumn but these colors and designs bring it over into winter do you have any thoughts for knitters out there because wool is perhaps as a texture much more closely related to textures for autumns but with the abundance of colors out there, there's absolutely no reason why you can't make a hand knit sweater for any of the 12 seasons in wool. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um, so so tell me, tell me, tell me, Christine, about bright winter. Bright winter. Um, textiles that saturate and stay that way. Lycra isn't necessarily applicable to the real world and neither is satin. You know, glitter, holographic colors, 
neon colors. It can be stunningly beautiful, but it's not, these are accents and accessories to me. It's not really um, a real world applicable. Sometimes I think about, yeah, would you get hired for jury duty? Like how much could people trust you? you know? <laughs> That's a mm. kind of a, an extreme, but still. You're, in, you're a bright winter and I know you like natural texture. So how do you work it out? I am and I do. I like natural weaves and fabrics and I because I like the feel and the comfort of natural fabrics. And besides, there's the environmental sustainability issue, too. Yeah. So basically, I wear what I like, but I do it in as close to my bright winter color palette as possible. I shop by looking for the color. I would say when I go into a store, my eyes are roaming for color. And when I find it, I don't remember ever saying no to an item based on texture. I sense that you do though. Yeah, all the time. I, I, I hate those synthetic ones where you feel like they're so static. You, you're you like an ambulatory power plant when you wear them. <laughs> and I, I'm, a, I'm very comfort driven, you know, like tags get me the wrong way. And if I get the <laughs> feel of a fabric it's that it's itchy or too static or just kind of rubs me the wrong way, there's just no way in a very hot place that you're going to see me wearing it no matter how perfect the color may be so this may be where texture does trump color a little bit same as feeling mm. does in the colors of our home yeah would you would you see any guidelines for listeners in any season like don't buy it if you know we said sharp shine for summer maybe mm. yeah how about don't buy it if you don't like it yeah, I can work with that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. No, seriously, I I find it much easier to give this kind of categorical advice when it comes to color. But with texture, I'm tending to be a little less stern because ultimately you're the one who's going to live in the item. And I guess this goes especially for the comfort creatures among us like me when it comes to fabrics. But um. Since you're pushing me, which you're so good at, and I like it, you're challenging me here. I would say that, let's see, if you're in autumn, you might look for that suede handbag that will look so soft and a little bit too soft and cuddly on a winter. And if you're a summer, smooth leather handbag is sophisticated, but a shiny patent leather bag is better left to the winters. And if you belong to the light seasons, maybe let that be a guideline when looking for fabrics too. Light fabrics for light seasons. And the dark seasons handle heavier weight fabrics better. Same for the soft versus bright seasons. As a general guideline, use the key feature of your season to guide you in choosing fabrics. Soft fabrics for soft seasons. Um, the bright seasons, they both handle shine. And if you're synthetically averse and choose matte natural fibers in your clothing for comfort reasons, just use accessories to express the shine and brightness. I guess that's my yeah. final Yeah, that's like the perfect solution, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, you, you, you don't need to have every item expressing the same thing all the time. So mm -hmm. I think that's just brilliant. Wear what you like yeah. and then use your accessories to to do the rest of the job. Yes, but we, Christine, we, we forgot dark winter. Dark winter. Mm -mm. Dark winter. Fabrics have weight here that you just, they're not really slinky or cold to the touch. Satins are luxurious and they're heavy. High-end bridal dress weight. Also scuba weight. I, I think scuba is a double weight knit with some, some stretchy thing like spandex in it. Scuba, scuba fabric. I'm not sure what the fashion name is. It's great because this is a modern textile, which goes well with synthetic type colors as winter has. Also, these modern colors do happen to come in this fabric, say the lighter rose pinks and reds of dark winter. And this kind of fabric is also matte and it softens bright colors, um, which works for the autumn side of dark winter. Dark winter for sure is softer than the other winters and it does look substantial and durable um, autumn effects. Ponte knit, that could be a great everyday example, alternative to scuba fabrics. Mm. Yes. And, and cotton, don't forget cotton, yeah. possibly because 
of the cotton variety, I find quilting fabrics very good in that way. You know, it's kind of has a lot of variety in color availability and very durable quality. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of handy for a dark winter with some very unique colors. Yeah, absolutely. And, and t-shirts too, right? Everybody owns a t-shirt and mm -hmm. they also will come in, in a huge variety of color. There may be sharper shine in dark winter. Often the icy colors and the jewel tones like teal and emerald. Whereas dark autumn, I prefer the shine in the browns and golds. And if, if it is going to be blue or green, a grainier, more textured shine. But dark winter is winter and glittery fabric can be great. I'm being very partial to it myself. <laughs> but I do prefer it in blacks and grays. It kind of looks uh, like gravel, like asphalt. And darker uh, color too, like lead or tungsten. I like it when that shines. I think it looks great, maybe like an oil slick. Also, um, if it's very shiny, smaller areas, like a shoulder patch. It, maybe it looks more like shiny grit, actually, than glitter. And even colored, the granularity of it, it would be too large and irregular to look like glitter, glitter and it would look coarse on a spring wouldn't have the finesse that a bright season would wear, wouldn't have that crystal and delicate aspect. Um, depends again on the body type and the type of garment, of course. And still in winter, sheer can work or it can look kind of flimsy. I prefer it with designs embroidered in. It, it somehow solidifies the effect and it gives that folklore look that I think is so flattering for autumn. Hmm. Good. Well, Christine, I think we've kind of covered all the four main seasons with a little bit of delectable snacky tidbits for the neutral seasons. So I think and a little bit of travel for our listeners. We, we yes. took the months and trips. Yes, into you, Christine's wonderful landscapes, which I yeah. always enjoy. So I think we'll call that a wrap. And I wanted to thank our listeners for being with us today and let you know that Christine and I will take a break from the podcast uh, in the rest of July and also August, but we'll be back with a new episode in September. Until then, take care and enjoy your summer if you're in the northern hemisphere and enjoy the cooler weather if you're sufficiently south of the equator. So bye for now. Bye, everyone.